universities become uh, almost like charted out or outsourced from the Ministry of Education. The Ministry of Education uh, would say, uh, yes, we approve um, of this study course. Yes, we approve of the university as a whole. And we have specialty specialists that, you know, have certain criteria <coughs> for new study courses or curricula, and and we give the stamp for proof at the start. Uh, but then you are on your own, and how are you on your own? Through namely through the quality control system uh, from accredit accreditation agencies. Previously, the university would. Boy, uh, the Minister of Education would employ everybody, would give the go-ahead for uh, everything that happens at the university, and then would evaluate the quality or make sure the quality was decent. And that uh, was a very different, uh, and they ran into lots of role conflicts and lots of clientels and lots of all kinds of stuff. So in terms of public administration, this outsourcing as the Americans know it, you know, has been a different technique installed by the Bologna system. Um, then the, 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 the accreditation um, also is transnational in terms of quality control. So the, um, the organizations that accredit are um, get the stamp of approval from the Ministry of Education, but at the same time, uh, uh, agency A and B and C, everybody who wants to go into the business can seek that approval, and they can become transnational and seek in every country in Europe for that approval. So you have a kind of educational uh, accreditation, let's say entrepreneurship. And of course, every study course then has to pay for the labor that goes into accrediting. So it becomes almost like an internal cost to quality, a quality control cost uh, that you pay for agencies outside. Um, um, then you have the privatization elements. Where As the Bologna process started, and as the decentralization started, um, the entire higher university space in Europe was also given another slot. The, the, you had the public education space, unlike the United States, you have very little private education space before, but now it's a part of the policy. Now you have a private education space sector. And of course, new uh, with funds from various sources, including some public funds, you have private uh, universities being um, generated uh, for this space and this, this space. Um, and uh, of course, then the question is, uh, uh, you know, do we have a trend that goes towards private educational systems, um, to a private educational system, meaning now that we have private educational units, maybe the state can relax on the funding of the public education system. And then you suddenly have tuition uh, fill the gap of funding, and, and everybody needs to go to private, private universities uh, particularly where it's labor intensive in training, where it's capital intensive, it's more difficult to do because in physics and in chemistry and in the sciences particularly, you need a lot of capital to, to start a study program um, and research to it. So, so you have this discussion. And then the educational critiques um, that's learning as labor we discussed. The instrumentalization we discussed because that's the instrumentalization of knowledge for the labor market or um, instrumentalization of research, uh, you know, given the applied science um, branch for patterns and usefulness of knowledge. Um, so, the in, you know, and then the question is 
to what extent can you, um, uh, would the system stifle uh, creativity um, because um, um, probably, not just probably, creativity doesn't seem to come from ever more specialization and instrumentalization in order for the next wave of creative um, science and um, knowledge. Um, you need to look across your fence, over your fence, into other disciplines, or you need to fall back on a general basis of knowledge that has transmitted, been transmitted to you and every generation through the humanities tradition. I call it now the humanities, I could also call it the basic sciences tradition, but you need more than ever more specialization and ever more training. You need to look over to other disciplines, and that's usually the source of creativity. So um, going this route, you know, has immediate short-term benefits, maybe. In the long term, it may stifle creativity too much. So that it would be um, um, a, a criticism and a discussion. And it even relates to the human rights discussion. See, to be human uh, is to be, in human rights terms, to be integrated in society. To be integrated in society is not just to have enough money to go to the movies, but to have literacy um, that is sufficient, literacy levels that allow you to participate all over in society. And not just to read a stupid newspaper, you know, that are becoming more stupid. You know, so it's 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 kind of like it, it's it's an extended literacy definition. It's, this literacy definition is tied to a competency definition, and human rights now coming from the social integration and being part and not excluded, being included in society means you gotta have enough general education and not just specials. So this is a kind of dimension. Then. Um, the global transnational measures, um, you have, as I mentioned, um, uh, you have uh, uh, motivated and also enforced um, kind of elements, for instance, of cooperation across borders. Erasmus systems, Socrates systems are ways to cooperate and to exchange students for various goals uh, in the European educational space. Um, but the cooperation is enforced in yet another way. Um, so um, any accreditation uh, that comes by your study program will ask the study program, how do you participate with other language areas? How do you participate with other universities in the country and outside the country? So cooperation has become a salient dimension to accreditation. And even in research, uh, the Bologna system you know, envisions research to be equally cooperative. And the Bologna uh, vision is a circular process where you go from, from teaching to labor market to research and you have practice, research, teaching, all in a circle of process organized. That means you need to enforce cooperation also across the um, borders in research. I, I had the privilege of being um, in expert committees um, in the National Science Foundation in Switzerland, you know, where we had millions of dollars or francs to administer in social policy. And I was in such committees twice, and I saw in the earlier committee there was no cooperation, but in the later committee we immediately had to call, uh, um, you know, principal investigators to the task, you know, where is your cooperation uh, with the unit abroad, or how do how does your knowledge how does your proposal link to the work that others do abroad? How will your knowledge be circulated and generated and circulated 
to and with other units abroad, etc. So this cooperation mechanism is part and parcel of accreditation and it came out of the Bologna reform process. I'm beginning to speak like a salesman. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just it's just we can discuss you know more. Then you have the global and that's the latest edition, particularly as it relates to PhD programs. Erasmus Mundus. I'll give you an example. Um, a PhD program in sustainable development. Um, the university were all, let's say, educational modules um, are given, uh, is in Porto. Porto, however, has is in cooperation with two other universities, I think, or three, one from England, one from France, and one from Germany. The four are the, uh, um, uh, the core, uh, the European core, to administer this PhD program in sustainable development. Mundus means outside, then you have, that's the core, and then you have other universities associated outside. And this is the core that administers, but they are part of cooperation. And they have, in, they are not just tacked on, they are also uh, partners, but the process gets started by, by this group. Now suddenly, you know, I know once a student in this program, she is from Fiji, and Fiji is not part of the Fulbright system, so it doesn't have any tag-ons to, let's say, other exchange programs, now from a US perspective. But uh, she now can participate here and is fully funded to participate. So Mundus means the core organizers look for partner universities outside. Partner universities outside send students uh, that have to pass certain tests and the core defines according to the Bologna standards and there's a screening process but the students are fully subsidized. They have no financial risk. So this woman for instance is has a family, her kids are big enough. She has been teaching at the University of Fiji she has a kind of a master's ABD and geography and subdivision uh, sustainable development and now she has the opportunity uh, to go um, and get a PhD that then is uh, useful for her university and additional qualification there. At the same time she can travel with it worldwide since um, the PhD from there will be accepted all over Europe and probably the United States as well. So, so and, and this is uh, the cooperation that's being motivated and enforced. Um, uh, in this case, um, the Mundus. The Mundus. Um, the educational critiques of the reform we have seen, um, meaning, you know, is it too instrumental or is it? Um, general enough, and then also another element. Uh, can you, does it make sense uh, to test every little course that you have taken? I say now little because three hours is not much. Yeah. And, and does it make sense to kind of assembly line the students into a full workload uh, with periodic testing, testing, testing. And then um, um, educational psychology um, might produce enough arguments that say, you know, this testing and of short-term um, uh, memory doesn't really constitute learning. And so part of the criticism against this trend would be, you know, forget about the workload assembly line testing kind of in process. Uh, go back to the old system and then test and then test 
let's say, associative memory and learning, uh, you know, that you can show by having, let's say, a problem case, and then you mobilize not short term, but this also, but long term memory from learning, and you bring it together in a problem solving context, etc., etc. So that would be one of the criticisms. Another criticism would be this system doesn't allow you very well what the Harvard Business School is known for doing and, and uh, Dutch uh, medical training at Amsterdam is used for doing. Let's say you take a, a problem um, and solution approach to learning. So medical students in Amsterdam would be typically, typically from the very beginning be introduced by, let's say, case of pneumonia, and then they would have to find knowledge to this problem setting, and if they don't get it in an introduction to pathology, they would have to go to a team or to resource persons, and then they would work as a team of three or four students on pneumonia, and then get the knowledge from literature, from other colleagues, from practitioners, from researchers, in, in, in finishing this module. And then maybe this module might have to be structured over more than just kind of a semester, depending on the problem case they are confronted with. And, but the Bologna system is open to that kind of approach. It, um, meaning you can modularize also these kind of learning systems as is being done at Harvard also, or at Northwest Business Schools, typically, uh, uh, as an example. You have, um, uh, uh, then uh, the last point would then be um, relating to uh, globalization and world society. Now the Erasmus Mutus and the cooperation of the strategy enforced you know, tend to signal that Europe wants to tap into the talents of the world at large. They want to tap into it by helping, uh, by getting talent that has already been formed, and by uh, adding on to this talent in a world cooperation system. Now, from a political economy point of view, you could argue, given globalization and neoliberal globalization, you know, it makes business sense to go that route because you tap invariably uh, when you have an Erasmus Mundus into the elites in Fiji or into the elites in China or into the elites, and you kind of tie them to your European core. And then uh, these uh, people can also help bridge uh, and be facilitators of the globalization process, you know, to China or to Fiji or whatever. So, so what previously was done, for instance, um, uh, the pharmaceutical industry, lacking such instruments, um, they would bring researchers from China into their research units in Novartis or Roche in Basel, and then they would try to cooperate with the university and their research units in also equipping these Chinese or Indians with degrees. So when Novartis and Roche uh, set up a, a production facility or a research facility, in India or China, they could reach into it with that very same personnel that they have trained and done research with at home in the home office and with the help of Boston University. But now the Erasmus Pontus is kind of almost like a structure that's uh, flowing for, you know, is kind of a, an additional structure for this purpose. And ideally, then you would have a, a global knowledge society, um, maybe not from an instrumentalization point of view, but let's assume you have approaches um, uh, 
to the world and to science, you know, uh, from other cultures, and this is real knowledge and good ideas, and, and substantial knowledge we have forgotten. It's almost like a biodiversity, you know, you, you go to a remote places of the world and you look for biodiversity and then you look what, what biodiversity can tell you there and maybe you can instrumentalize it and maybe it's just a, a solving a piece of the evolutionary science as a puzzle and uh, etc. So you could think of this uh, cooperation mechanism as a kind of a, um, a kernel of towards and a seed towards uh, the global knowledge society. And now I want to conclude, and maybe we can open and talk a bit longer. I've talked an hour, not 45 minutes, but uh, I'll be around for questions and we can get going now. Thank you. So we have at least a few minutes for questions. Uh, please. <coughs>